Hello, I am Bombokabo, and this is the first in a series of videos that I'm going to be releasing all about Final Fantasy XIV. Geared mostly towards new players, but with information that might be helpful to anybody who doesn't know. In this video, we're going to be covering the character settings and one system setting. This is a new character, and right away the first thing that we should cover is what the elements on your HUD are. So first up, you have your system information. It has your time, any mail that you have, you can see what your packet sending is, and your server. And then as we continue, you have the map and your coordinates. That's your position currently on the map. You have your equipment menu that shows you the current state of your gear. If it is white, or green it is not broken white means that it is spirit bonded green is not spirit bonded and if it's red the little dots then it means that the gear is broken then you have your inventory grid that shows your your current inventory and will denote based on color of the dot whether or not it is gear or a, an item that can stack or can't stack you can also open your inventory by clicking it then you have your main menu, and below that is your gill. Then you have your hot bars, your health and mana bar, your experience, and your chat. So with all that out of the way, we'll go open up the character configuration. Uh, K is the default hotkey for that, but we'll ignore it for now. First up, let's do movement settings. So there's two types, standard and legacy. Right now you can see standard type movement. If you're using standard, pressing the S key to back up will not turn your character around to move backwards, whereas Legacy will. So if you're coming from World of Warcraft, you might be more familiar with Standard, and if you're not, then Standard might feel really weird for you. Now here we have both of them side by side, so that way you can get a good feel for how they, uh, how the they are different from each other. Personally, I like to use Legacy, so I'm going to switch to that. Then we have our flight options, take off on one jump or on two. Then we have our chat settings. Uh, there's really only one here. There's a whole other section dedicated to chat. Basically what it does is if you hit a key on your keyboard, it will automatically open chat. And sometimes I still like to use the keyboard hotkeys in order to open menu things when I'm using a controller. So I don't really recommend direct chat, but if you're looking for that setting, that's where it is. Next, we have cutscene skipping, which everyone, check check these boxes. If these boxes aren't checked, they should be. Um, you can always go, it won't skip cutscenes if you've seen, if you have not seen them, so you don't have to worry about it, but it will skip ones that you've already seen, which is super helpful when you're farming something and will save you and the people in your party a lot of time. It's not mandatory, no one can make you check these boxes, but it can be really annoying to have to manually close out of every cut of the cutscene every time you run a dungeon past that first time. So highly recommend checking these three boxes right here. Next, uh, as we move down, there are camera control options. Now these options right here invert your camera. So if you like using inverted camera controls, there you go. I don't, so we're not going to. First person camera is right below that. That's a little tricky. I personally don't like first person camera. No one's gonna play in first person. The game isn't really designed for that. However, I have been told that first person is very useful for the housing system. If you're going and decorating a house, it is helpful to go into first person to make sure that everything is where you want it to be without your camera clipping through different housing items while they're still being set up. Now, I don't, I can't personally attest to that, um, but it is something that I have been told and I feel like I should pass that information off to you. And then down here, we have our camera speed controls, as well as our third person camera angle slider. Uh, that will, each of these bars respectively, will either change how fast your camera moves with stick. So if you're using a controller with your keyboard, if you're using the arrow keys, which are 
defaulted to rotating the camera. Your character's turn speed, which is how fast your character turns in a circle. And your third person camera angle, which is where your camera height is in relation to your character model. All right, and then we move on. Uh, these are target settings. The first one isn't helpful. Uh, next, we have automatically face target, which is very important because if your back is to the target, you can't hit them. Next, we have enable auto target when no target is specified. Below that, we have disable targeting of pets and minions in battle. It doesn't really come up much in dungeon or raid. Below that, we have switch target circle to target select. Checking this box will remove the ability to soft target, which means that you can only hard target. Personally, I prefer that, but the option is yours. This is an important one. This is your click filter settings. If you enable this, then it will filter out what can be targeted based on what's around your mouse. Very helpful, very useful. It makes it so you can't accidentally target something you're not trying to. Um, it is off by default because of tab targeting, but if you like to click to target or you keep your mouse in your combat, that's helpful. Onto the next tab, we have our target filter settings. Incredibly useful. You have two options, one for weapon out and one for weapon away. Filter those how you see fit to make it so you can't accidentally target an enemy when you don't mean, mean to, or you don't accidentally target a mailbox while you're trying to target a person. That's what those settings are for. I would recommend going through, testing them and tweaking them out uh, until you find something that fits you and that you like and that works for how you play. And then we have the same settings for controller, but again, we're not going over controller settings, so not super helpful. Over here, we have our uh, character settings. The first options are display headgear, visor, main hand, and auto sheath weapon when not in battle. Those options are all configurable from your character screen, which is the C key on the keyboard by default. And the weapon sheathing is done with Z. You can change how long it takes for your weapon to go away, keep it out longer, however, whatever you like. Below that, we have idle animation delay. This is how long it takes before your character goes into its idle animation. And you can also set it to randomly choose an idle animation from the list of, I think, four or five per race per gender. Next, we have battle effect settings. I highly, 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 highly recommend setting party to show limited and others to show none. Not only does it increase your frame rate while in dungeons or raids, but it also makes it so you can see what it is you're hitting. Without this change, it can become very difficult to actually see what your boss or whatever enemy you're fighting is doing. Uh, here we can see what this looks like by default in a 24-man raid. Now, this boss is very big, but you can see how many particle effects there are. And just, it it is not hard to imagine how problematic that can be. So let's go ahead and change these. We'll set party to show limited, which will still show important party effects, such as any AoE heals or shields that go out or helpful things to stand in, such as Asylum or Sacred Soil. Those will continue to show up, so you don't have to worry about that. And then others will hide all other player abilities because those don't affect you. And now, as we can see, much cleaner, much easier to see what's going on. Can be a little bit silly watching everyone flail around, but it's much better for performance. So I will go ahead and leave those settings there. And then we we'll go over to mouse and enable clicking on self is bad. Don't use that. Trust me, you can very easily accidentally target yourself in combat when you don't mean to. If you are in a party and you want to target yourself, you can click on yourself in the party list. And then we have enable clicking on the field to remove the target. It's okay. 
I don't like it personally. You can just hit escape to untarget the boss or enemy that you're targeting. You don't need to click on the field, but it, it's all right. Either way on this one is okay. And then under that, we have mouse wheel settings. You can configure other things to your mouse wheel if you want to. I'm gonna leave those alone because I don't really feel a need to, I never have, but those are there if you need them. Over in item settings, we have our inventory interface. It comes with three options. And uh, we'll go over those right here. So this is the default. As you can see, you have four windows in your crystals and your key items, four little sections. Um, it's all right, but it's small and clicking through those tabs is a little annoying in my opinion. Then we have the expanded option. Let's go ahead and look at that. And here you see it opens two windows side by side. So you have less to click through. This is very nice. But this one, open all. This, this is the best. Your whole inventory opens up and then you have your key items and your crystals separately. This is perfect. This is what I play on. This is what most of my friends play on. A lot of, almost everyone I know likes, prefers that. And then here you have all of them side by side to help you make your decision. Retainer inventory. Retainers are like a bank. They also have their own inventory, 175 slots. It only goes up to expanded, which is okay because you don't have to open it all the time. Um, below that, we have our newly obtained items and armory chest. I prefer to keep this off. Then we have our item sort options. A lot of different options for sorting. I like to leave them at default. I'm not, I like all of my stuff to fill one after the other, but you can have it set up so that way items will sort into different pages of your inventory, which is nice. Um, I know people who prefer that, mostly crafters, because it will switch, it will filter all of those separately. Now we have our uh, general UI settings. We can leave pretty much all of this the way it is. The pop-up and display help, that is what you see here. The little boxes that appear next to your mouse. I like to switch those to fixed um, because having them next to your mouse can cover up important information that you're trying to see. And then the recommendations and play guide, as you get further into the game, you can disable those. They are very helpful at the beginning. I will admit that. But once you get further into the game and you know what's going on and what you want to do, they become less helpful. Next, we move on to HUD display. All of these things can be turned off either here or in the HUD layout configuration screen. So we will get to that in a moment. The most important thing on this page is this. Display targets remaining HP percentage. 100% of players need to have this on. Everyone should turn this on. It is one of probably the single most important setting here for just general gameplay. Being able to tell the percentage of health that your target has left is game changing. And without, without this enabled, it's just a bar. Everyone has to turn it on. 100% if you do nothing else from this video, do this, turn this on. All right, moving on, we have the party list settings. You can change the display of the party list. You can change the order in which different roles appear. You can hide or unhide things. Moving on, we have display name setting. Personally, I like to turn my name off. I know what my character's name is. I don't need to see it. I know what it is. I picked it. Uh, so I like to turn off display name settings for me and my companions and my pets because I know what they are. Now, for everybody else, you have the same options. I like to leave party member, alliance members, those names I like to leave on. For other PCs, I like to turn those names off 
if only because it makes it much easier to see what it is you're doing or looking for out in the world. It does, by some accounts, make the game feel a little bit more lonely, but I would prefer to be able to find what I'm trying to find amidst the sea of players. Uh, I will show what that looks like a little bit later. Moving on, we have NPC names. These are usually good to leave on. Uh, the one that I will mention is housing furniture. If you turn off the housing furniture names or set it to only when targeted, it will get rid of those little white arrows that you will see on interactable housing items. So that's worth noting. And then minions, we can also turn off. Um, but objects, NPC names, those are important. And then over here we have our general settings. These are PvP settings. You can leave these as they are. Most of us won't do PvP. Now we have our hotbar settings. Uh, you can hide or unhide your unused bar slots, turn off the hotbar numbers, remove the cycling buttons, disable drag and drop repositioning. Highly recommend that. You don't want to see that. Um, it, is, it can be very devastating to accidentally slide your bar somewhere and have difficulty getting it back. So we'll go ahead and turn off those and hide the bar slots um, for regular gameplay. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll leave unassigned slots on. Moving on, you can see you are able to reshape the hotbar. You can change it from 12 by one to two by six, six by two. Incredibly useful. It gives you a lot of freedom when designing your HUD. And now we have our uh, pet hotbar settings, displaying it, not displaying it. We can leave those as they are. Over here, we have our shared hotbar. Remember, big, big disclaimer. Whenever you are setting up your hotbars, make sure that all of the buttons for a specific job that are not shared between jobs are not shared. Because if you put all of your Paladin abilities on a shared hotbar, and then you unshare that hotbar, it will remove all the abilities from it. So definitely go through, remember to check this, so that way you don't have to redo your hotbars by accident. And then same thing applies to cross hotbars, but this is a, a PC keyboard mouse setup. So we'll move on. Um, more cross hotbar settings. I can cover that in another video, but not right now. Now we have our chat settings, display name, text size. Over here, you have your uh, display world name for if a player is from a different server, whether or not you want your character's mouth to move when you're typing something, profanity filter, error messages, log window item linking. Definitely leave item linking on. I like to turn off the error messages. Profanity filter will be up to you. Now we have our timestamp settings. If you would like to change the format of the timestamp in chat logs, I like to set it to a 12 hour clock because I play, I live in a region with a 12 hour clock. And then there are the log filters and colors. You are able to fully customize your chat layout. I would recommend going through, taking the time to edit your four chats to be exactly how you want them to be. Okay, now let's move on to HUD layout. This is the HUD layout screen. It is one, messy by default, and two, can be very daunting. But the thing that's great about it is that everything is completely modular. You're able to move and resize and reshape pretty much every single element here. All of them can be moved, they can't all be reshaped. Um, but as you can see, you're able to do some wacky stuff with your hotbar, um, and you can truly make a unique HUD layout that is all like designed for you. Some of the HUD elements can even be split up into individual components, so that way you can change where even those are displayed. So truly, you have complete freedom with this. So this is what I did in just a, a minute, two minutes. This is something that I would actually play with. It's very close to the HUD layout on my main, and it's pretty clean. So. Take some time, go through, don't be afraid. There's also a bunch of pictures online of people showing off their HUD layouts. So experiment, enjoy it. Uh, you can have four saved HUD layouts. So if you have one that you like and you don't wanna mess it up, 
just switch to a different HUD layout option and work on that one. Moving on, we have our key bindings. Basically everything in the game can be key binded. There are tons of options. Going over all of them would take forever. There are two though. There are two incredibly important keybinds. And those are in shortcuts right here. Return, which as you can see is this button down on your hotbar by default when you make your character. It will return you to whatever etherite you set as your home point. And the other is teleport, which you will unlock a little bit later in the game and allows you to fast travel to any etherite. These two abilities can be hotkeyed. It frees up two buttons on your hotbars, which lets you put anything else there because they don't need to be there if they have their own key bindings. Highly recommend setting them. Personally, for return, I like to set the key binding to home. It does have first or third person toggle on it, but I never do that anyway. I don't like first person. And then for teleport, I like to set as end because it's right under home and I don't need the default key binding that was on that key. Check that out. Do that. It's great. Now, one more thing, under system settings, in other settings, there is display limits, character and object quantity. This will limit the number of things, players and objects that can be on your screen at one time. The game will prioritize your party members. This is maximum. Look at, how, it's, it's great. There's so many things you can see Frame rate is low. We're hovering around 45 FPS right now. If we set this to minimum, you can see it's so much clearer and the frame rate has gone up. And now, if you'll remember a little bit earlier, I said that I prefer to have other player characters' names turned off. We toggle that and apply it and look, look at how much clearer it is. It's so easy to see, it's so easy to navigate. It feels, in my opinion, more immersive, but not everybody will feel that way, and that's fine. That is my character setting video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, go ahead and leave a like, maybe consider subscribing. It would be incredibly kind, I would really appreciate it. I do have other videos if you would like to check those out, and there will be more tutorial guide style videos like this in the future. I would love any feedback. Go ahead and leave a comment uh, whether or not you like the video, what I could do better, or if I missed anything, go ahead and let me know down below as well. That's been me, and I will talk to you all next time. Take care.